Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue and I am back for another Insecure review, y'all. Yes, y'all. <laughs> Let me tell y'all the first thing I remember seeing from this episode was uh, Andrew. Andrew wearing Molly's ass out at the cute little date in which he has to have a phone call, you know, with some business stuff. He seemed agitated, but he didn't really want to share with her. But he shared that D with her, though. That's what he did, okay? So Issa and Condola get a lay of the land for the block party, okay? Yeah, I'm trying to say the, you know, retarded ass name right. Leave me alone. Things get weird when Condola says that she has plans for the weekend with Lawrence, okay? And they just kind of both start pouring out how they're feeling about it. They don't want it to be awkward. They don't want it to be weird, especially since Issa says that ain't nobody trying to lose a good girlfriend behind a man that puts mayo on his fries. I was like, well, I'll catch up. Ew, <laughs> that's nasty. But yeah, they decide that they're not going to let it get weird and they're going to be friends. They're going to keep it cute. And I'm glad because I like their little chemistry together. They seem to be kind of on the same wavelength to me. You know what I'm saying? With the awkward black girl vibe, even though uh, Kenzola is not as awkward, but they're still like a awkward quirky black girl vibe there so yeah like i like the vibe they get when they together so then there's a halloween get together with the you know original crew kelly uh tiffany molly and Issa. Issa is dressed as a jigaboo from um from school days see if i can go to bed you know like lawrence fishburne's girlfriend from there i was like all right that's cute because i was like is she the only one without a uniform on and then she stood up and i saw it i was like oh molly it's Isis, okay? <laughs> Burr! It's cold in here. I said there must be some Taurus in the atmosphere. I said, Burr! <laughs> okay, look, I don't remember. Don't worry about me. But yeah, y'all remember that. Um, And uh, Kelly is uh, Baps, but she's uh, Holly Berry's character in Baps. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> she was trying to dance outside the audition girl you was not gonna get that job okay and tiffany was cleopatra okay some regular degular schmegler shit you know what i'm saying everybody else got like a real cute you know we trying costume okay you know what i'm saying it's a black movie costume and bitch cleopatra okay but they're discussing Molly and how she feels about Andrew. Like he's not really letting her in and she doesn't want another relationship where it ends up only being sex. She wants something a little bit more than that. Issa does mention how she seems to always be looking for an issue, always looking for a problem. And she kind of do. She kind of do. I'm just saying. But in this case, I think that her feelings about Andrew are absolutely right. That he's not letting her in. I need to know what's going on in your everyday life. Like, you know, what are you bothered about? Like, that's how people form relationships. They talk about things that's, you know, happening. <laughs> like, you know, like, what, what are y'all talking about if we're not discussing, like, how you feel about your job or whatever coworker you hate? You know what I'm saying? Y'all, then we see Issa getting a D from Calvin and he tells her to press his booty button and I almost passed out. <laughs> and y'all, after the sex session that seemed to be going well, either way, okay, she had a hard time getting to the booty button, but uh, she seemed to be having a good time before they got to that point. When they get up, he realizes that the condom is not on his, his situation anymore. Uh, and she can't seem to find it. I said, well, it's obviously up in you. <laughs> like, obviously. If it's not in the bed, if it's not on your leg, if it's not nowhere on him or in the bed, it's obviously in you, girl. And she goes to the bathroom and it goes splat on the mirror. I was not prepared for that. <laughs> splat. I was like, <gasps> I mean, look, we've all had it happen to us before. I'm just saying. Molly is still hated at her job, okay? Yeah, she has that one male coworker whose name I can't remember, but either way, he doesn't see it for her. She's trying to have casual conversation. He's like, I got time for this, bitch, boo. <laughs> like, get out of my face. Consola and Lawrence have a lunch date, and she brings up how she and Issa were laughing about him putting mayo on his fries, and he gets kind of nervous. He's like, oh, yeah? Like, what else y'all was talking about? And she was like, we weren't really talking about you, but we had to talk about you so that it can stop being awkward, but it's not like that. The one thing Issa did mention was that Lawrence used to run track, but that was really it. But to Lawrence, it's like, what else could you possibly be telling her? Either way, I don't want you to tell her anything negative or sully how 
she's going to feel about me if I'm trying to like, you know, have this relationship popping. So I understand where he's coming from. He goes and talks to his dumbass homeboys who tell him to shut it down and then be upfront at the same time. This advice was good because it translated to him meeting up with her and just asking her very nicely to keep his name out of her mouth. And she was like, oh no, like it's not like that. We just had like minimal conversation, but I will definitely, you know, not sully her perception of you since you really want y'all's relationship to work. Y'all both like Konzola. Go Konzola. You know what I'm saying? Like, yay Konzola. Like, <laughs> that's how Issa feels. So, you know, if that's what he wants to do, if Condola's happy, she's good. She doesn't want to ruin their situation. I'm like, oh, all right, Issa, girl, you better be happy on your own. So you ain't hating on this nigga and Konzola. All right. Molly meets with Issa just as she's finishing up a meeting with Konzola. And Issa's trying to make it a threesome. Like, girl, if you just about to go get you some lunch, we already here, girl. Just sit down and have your lunch with us. And Molly is like, <laughs> okay, girl. Like, I was trying to talk to you alone, girl. She was like, oh, but I mean, she could just add her stuff to our stuff and we can all talk. Like, don't be like that, you know? You want me to tell her? She was like, no, it's okay. It's okay. Because it's already awkward now. <laughs> it's already awkward. And then they only had two menus and not three. Molly is like, can I get the menu, please? <laughs> like, bitch, this was our lunch date. Give my menu back. Okay, and then Condola is just sitting there like, ooh, okay. And Issa was like, girl, I already know what I want. Here you go. Like, Issa, it's uncomfortable, sis. Don't try to make it work. It don't seem like it's going work molly seemed like one of them friends that don't like when you bring somebody else in to make it a threesome because y'all i was condola back in middle school i was okay we made it a threesome but only for a little while molly calls herself making gumbo for andrew for a little at home date because she wants them to have like an intimate you know surrounding so they can talk and have a conversation and really get to know each other and not just have jokes and sex right so, you know, of course her gumbo was too salty, but whatever. They sit down, they're talking, and she mentions how she feels like he's not really opening up to her. He has stuff going on, and he just doesn't want to talk to her about it. For him, he gets all defensive, and he's like, why is it always an issue with you, Molly? And then he gets up, and he storms out. And Molly tries to text Issa, but Issa is at the club trying to meet up with Kenzola. So, you know, it's like, once again, my friend ain't there for me because she kicking it with Kenzola. That's going to eventually work itself into an issue. I already know. Lisa calls Lawrence to make sure it's cool, you know, for her to mention that, you know, they had a conversation about Condola to Condola right before she goes into the club so she can, you know, have a good time. Now, we didn't see her meet up with Condola, but, you know, whatever. At work, Molly is having a meeting, okay, with that one male co-worker who don't really see it for her. I was telling y'all about, right? Okay. And they're sitting there having a meeting and something came up and it was obvious she had an opinion about it, but she decided not to say anything. So after the guy comes to her office and he's like, you know, he comes in and shuts the door. She's like, oh, okay. And he's like, what's the problem? Like, you obviously felt some type of way in the meeting earlier. Why didn't you say anything? And she was like, I was just trying not to be negative. And he was like, so you was going to let me waste my time and do more work than I had to? Like, I don't need that type of partner. I need you to be honest and give me your expertise. That's what you were hired for, Molly, okay? And Molly is like, look, I just know we started off on a bad foot last year. I didn't handle that case right, whatever the case was. She didn't handle it right. We remember, y'all. She was kind of going out for self, and everybody was trying to welcome her, but she was just trying to, you know, jump out as the best when it was about teamwork, but she wasn't being a team player. So now she's trying to make it right. And he's kind of like, yeah, all right. And then he just walks out and leaves her door open. So I don't know if it's going to get better or what. But yeah, Molly, you had messed that up, girl. You really did. Molly and Issa go on a hike. And Issa says that Molly is always trying to find a problem. And she wonders if she really wants to be happy. So Molly and Issa go and have a hike, y'all. And this is when they have this conversation about Andrew and how Issa feels like Molly is always trying to find a problem. And if she really wants to be happy. So it's like they've said this continuously to her over and over again. And I guess it's not sinking in that she needs to stop finding issues with everything. And she does do that. But with this situation with Andrew, I feel like he definitely needs to open up a little bit more. But he calls her while they're having this conversation. And... He apologizes to Molly for the way he reacted. He says it's an issue he's already had. He doesn't know how to open up like that, but he wants to try. They gonna go ahead and continue to try to make it work for now. Issa asks who it was, and Molly says that it was just work. And it's like, well, why didn't you say it was him? But I guess since Issa had already, you know, said the same thing that he had said to her when he was wrong, I guess she didn't want to share with Issa about it. But I don't 
I don't know why. Like, I would have definitely been like, girl, that was him apologizing and telling me that he really do need to open up. See, I told you I wasn't tripping. Okay, I told you. But Molly was obviously feeling some type of way. And then Issa tells her that she dropped Calvin because he already got three kids and she don't have time to get pregnant for him. After that condom went missing, sis got scared. So <laughs> she ain't fooling with him no more. But anyway, y'all, that was, you know, this episode of Insecure. It was straight. You know, it was all right. We only had like, you know, two sex scenes. Eh. <laughs> I'm just saying, they be doing the most. But anyway, I hope y'all enjoy the review. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. I'll see y'all in the next one.